So good and bad news. Good news is this is the, well, the bad news is you have one more lecture. Good news is lunch is next and we'll be done with the morning lectures. So I'm uh, Dr. Gaffney. I'm a resident here and I'll be discussing thumb and finger ultrasound procedures. I'll be going over some basics of the ultrasound exam of the thumb and finger and I'll discuss diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. So by this point, you know that there are two main uh, Axes that we image with ultrasound, it's longitudinal, which run parallel to the images that you want to structure, images that you want to, or structures you want to image, and then transverse, um, which runs perpendicular to the structures that you want to image. Uh, there are four basic uh, areas that you'll want to examine in the finger and thumb, and that's the dorsal surface, which evaluates the extensors the palmar surface, which evaluates the flexors, and then the radial and ulnar aspects, um, mostly of the metacarpal phalangeal and the uh, interphalangeal joints to evaluate the collateral ligaments. These images just illustrate those different positions. Several diagnostic procedures um, that are useful in the finger and thumb are aspiration of fluid from joints or tendon sheets, biopsy of synovium, and biopsy of soft tissue masses. There are both diagnostic and therapeutic indications for an aspiration. Some of the diagnostic indications that we've already, uh, I'll just reiterate, but you, you have a patient with uh, known arthritis, but they have a synovial effusion or something just isn't completely typical, uh, the clinician may, may want more information um, to evaluate for septic arthritis, so if there's a suggestion of an infected joint, aspiration may be useful, to look for crystalline, uh, crystal-induced arthritis, and then to see if uh, you have an infected joint and to see um, the evaluation for therapeutic response. Some of the therapeutic indications for an aspiration include drainage of a septic joint, uh, which is similar to the next one, which is relief of elevated interarticular pressure. Um, and then if you have a painful hemarthrosis, you may want to evacuate that. We've gone over the potential complications, which include infection, which is fairly low if you use proper standard technique. And then you can have um, tendon and nerve tendon, nerve, and blood vessel injuries, which is kind of the primary reason to use ultrasound uh, rather than just doing these uh, procedures without uh, image guidance is that uh, you can visualize these structures in real time and avoid them. Contraindications to any of these procedures um, are similar, which is severe coagulopathy, thrombocytopenia, overlying cellulitis. These may or may not prevent you from doing these uh, doing these uh, procedures just because they are small, such small joints that they may not that those uh, contraindications may not really stop you from doing the procedure. Just some general principles. Um, I've kind of touched on the first one. You want to avoid uh, potentially damaging any nerves or vascular structures. Typically, uh, you'll enter these ultrasound procedures will be done in the long axis mostly, and you'll want to slightly flex and abduct the thumb and finger. Um, mostly this is this will come with experience, but you'll you'll want to see um, what's most comfortable for you in terms of uh, how you're going to visualize the joint. And especially ultrasound is good uh, because you can have the patients move and you can better visualize the joint space with them maybe flexing or extending their finger or thumb. And um, depending on where you're going, you'll enter on the dorsal or palmar surface. So some of the supplies needed, uh, the first one procedure I'll go over is a carpometacarpal joint aspiration. And uh, this is just uh, describes, it's a fairly simple for what you need, two needles, two syringes. The needles are uh, tiny, 25, 27, 25 gauge to do the needle aspiration. And uh, of course, any uh, tubing or whatever you're going to need to collect the synovial fluid for analysis. This picture illustrates the hand position and transducer position for a first carpometacarpal joint aspiration, which will be similar to, it'll be the same position for an injection of that joint, which I'll also go over later, but 
You'll have the uh, the hand with the radial, radial side wrist up, and the transducer will be in the long axis over the carpometacarpal joint. And again, uh, the needle, the um, angle of your needle will kind of depend on what you're comfortable with. Um, back to Dr. Chen's talk, whether or not you'll, you'd want to go steep or shallow, and you just have to get a feel for that and see what's best, but you can, you'll want to see the needle, and so maybe going shallower is better for these techniques. This is an ultrasound illustration on the... Here you have the carpal, metacarpal joint, and the second illustration our picture demonstrates the needle in the carpal metacarpal joint space. And you'll just want to visualize um, two echogenic bones and then the joint space, and you want to see your needle going into the joint space. The suggested supplies for the metacarpal phalangeal and the interphalangeal joint aspirations is similar to syringes small gauge needles, and then any slides for collecting synovial fluid if that's what you're going to be doing it for. And this demonstrates patient position, and this is at the metacarpophalangeal joint on the radial aspect. It's probably not, you know, the way you're going to do your injection. This picture is just simply to show you what uh, the radial evaluation would look like. And here you have the metacarpal phalangeal joint. This may be more of how you'd have the hand for a metacarpal phalangeal joint aspiration. Transducer in the long axis over the metacarpal phalangeal joint. And this needle here is taking a very steep angle. Might not be the ideal angle, but this picture gives you the point of kind of how you'd be positioned. Similar picture as before, showing a radi radial aspect evaluation of the interphalangeal joint and what that would look like on ultrasound. And you would be aiming for the joint space for these procedures. And here we have another image showing you how you would position the transducer and long axis over the proximal interphalangeal joint. Again, this needle may be steeper than you would want, but you'd have to adjust it accordingly. So that discusses, I just discussed the aspirations. I'll move on to the second type of procedure you might perform, which would be a synovial biopsy. This picture illustrates inflammatory synovitis, and you see the thickened synovium here. indicating synovitis. Now, the reason the clinician may ask you to do this is because they're trying to distinguish inflammatory versus infectious synovitis. This happened to be an in inflammatory. This patient had rheumatoid arthritis, and there was a correlate MR, which also showed bony erosions and thickened synovium. This is an ultrasound image, and I think this has, may have been shown already, but you have synovial hypertrophy along the metacarpal phalangeal joint in a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, and you can see increased vascular flow in that synovial hypertrophy. This image looks very similar to that, though there isn't a real distinguishing, but this patient happened to have infectious tenosynovitis, and here you can see the echogenic tendon of the flexor pollicis tendon, and above that, more, more hypoechoic thickened synovium. And so, in this technique for a synovial biopsy, you would want to just aim your needle, and it's a fairly large target, and you're aiming for the synovium to biopsy the synovium. I won't go through soft tissue masses in much detail, but just to say that. Um, most of the soft tissue masses that you're going to evaluate in the hand are going to be benign. However, um, you could have uh, malignant masses as well. And so uh, there always should be coordination. Uh, most importantly, the pre-procedure the pre planning in biopsy of soft tissue masses is probably 
more complicated than the biopsy of the mass itself because you want to determine whether or not the surgery is going to be done in your institution, if surgery is going to be indicated for this soft tissue mass, decide whether or not it's going, this mass would best to be used, do an FNA versus a core biopsy. And so all of that is probably more important, deciding your approach for the biopsy and coordination with surgery possibly, all of that is probably more complicated than the actual biopsy of the mass. And here I just illustrated a couple of different masses, and some of these have been discussed already, such as the giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath, and other type masses you could biopsy are fibroma, which is a fibrous, uh, fibrous connective tissue mass, and then a glomus tumor. I won't go into that much detail about those. So then the therapeutic interventions um, are similar to the uh, aspirations that I discussed. You can do steroid injections in any one of those joints, the interphalangeal, metacarpal phalangeal, and carpal metacarpal joints. Some of the reasons why you might do those are for uh, relief of pain with arthritis. Patients with arthritis um, would, can be on long-term uh, NSAIDs and steroids and maybe an interarticular uh, injection could, could give them a break from those medications that could give them more relief of uh, pain. Trigger finger is another indication to do a steroid injection and then de Quervin's tenosynovitis. Uh, you can also do ganglion cyst aspiration. So I'll just, uh, the only thing to think about, these are small joints, and so the smaller the joint, the less fluid you're going to want to put into these joints. So here you can see for the first carpal metacarpal joint injection that your total volume is only going to be about 1 cc, and that's divided with um, an local anesthetic and then your corticosteroid. Same position that I showed you before, long axis at the carpal metacarpal joint. Trigger finger was one that uh, I didn't go through. So trigger finger, you're actually going to be on the flexor surface, and the patients typically uh, will complain about uh, their fingers sticking or getting stuck, uh, kind of snapping with opening or closing the flexing or extending the finger, and um, the transducer is going to be along the long axis of the digit and the target is the flexor tendon sheath. Uh, you're actually going to be um, peritendinous and um, basically you'll have your transducer and it's the same for these other ones. Again, your, your total volume is only about 1 to 1.5 milliliters. This ultrasound image demonstrates de Quervin's tenosynovitis. You have inflammation um, of the abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis tendons, and they're surrounded by a distended synovial sheath. It's a painful inflammatory condition of the thumb and wrist, and that can be successfully treated with ultrasound-guided corticosteroid injection. The position for this is radial side wrist side along, transducer along the wrist, radial side up, and the this is also peritendinous injection, and you're going to look on ultrasound for the these tendons, the extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus tendons. You don't want to go into the tendons um, or the tendon sheath. You actually want to be outside the tendon sheath. Lastly, I'll discuss um, ganglion cyst aspiration. So ganglion cyst can form basically anywhere, and it's the most common uh, benign mass that you'll have in the hand. This is just another uh, ultrasound image demonstrating a ganglion cyst. It's best if you, um, most successful uh, aspirations occur if you aspirate at the base of the ganglion cyst. And um, most people advocate uh, putting in some steroid into after you've aspirated to cause a scarring and inflammatory reaction so that it may not recur. 
you do. This um, chart just basically goes over each uh, of the injections that I discussed and the type of needle you'd want to use, how much anesthetic and corticosteroid you would use. So I've discussed very fastly the diagnostic and therapeutic uh, procedures of the hand and thumb.